As we approach the middle of the year, let's take some time to take a look at the markets, see where they've been, where they currently are, and what investor expectations tell us about where they might be going in the future. Now presenting the latest edition of the Market Commentary. It's hard to believe that the stock market would be doing so well this year based on what's occurred. And let me just remind you that back in March, we had a shocking banking crisis that really resolved itself pretty quickly. Uh, we've had rising interest rates that the Federal Reserve has engineered to slow the economy down. And then, of course, we've had this uh, grinding war in Europe that in all other cases you might think of as being a negative for financial markets. U.S. large company stocks are up about 13% through the late part of June, and the NASDAQ index that many people think of as a representation of technology companies is up some 28% year to date. This is really pretty extraordinary given the background that I just mentioned. Uh, bonds are delivering positive returns, and this is after a devastating year last year when rising interest rates caused bonds to fall. So really, it looks like a very benign type of period for the financial markets, despite some of the negatives that I mentioned a moment ago. It would be reasonable for us to expect that rising interest rates would be a negative for the economy. And in fact, this is what the Federal Reserve has been attempting to do over the last year or year and a half. They raise interest rates with the idea of making borrowing more expensive so that economic activity slows down. And it's not that they're just trying to engineer a recession, but rather they're trying to get inflation uh, under control. So why is it then that after all of these rate rises, nothing has happened or the economies continue to chug along? Some ideas are that the first couple of uh, interest rate hikes really got us back to something that was more like a neutral position, that it had been so aggressively uh, supporting the economy that it took a little while to be got back to neutral. The other part is that we, we often understand that interest rate effects typically take some time to work their way into people's activities and the way that they uh, behave in the markets. And so it could be that it's coming and it's just not here yet. The markets are doing well, as I mentioned, and the U.S. economy is relatively stable at this point. But there are some indications that uh, a slowdown is in the future. For one, Unemployment remains low, the unemployment rate remains low, but anecdotally people are working fewer hours per week. So if you're in a manufacturing or a retail situation, it could be that you're not working the 35 or 38 hours a week that you used to, but more like 34 or something like that. Another thing that's beginning to happen is that purchasing managers at businesses are beginning to suggest that they see a slowdown coming. They're not buying the same amount of materials that they were in the past. Both of these are a few indications that the economy may be slowing down, despite things looking pretty good right now. Recall that inflation topped out at about 9% a year ago, and now it's around 4%. So the Fed activity seems to be working at least on the inflation front. But 4% is still above the long-term goal that the Fed has for the economy of 2%. They've been consistent in saying that they are going to go after inflation, even if it causes an economic slowdown. And most investors seem to believe that. And so the Fed has taken a pause at the most recent meeting, but there is every expectation that they'll raise rates again. The real difficult position will be if, an, if a, a recession occurs and inflation is still a bit higher than what they want it to be, what will they do? And so that's really the unknown about the next couple of months. It can be tempting for investors to try to determine whether a market is good or bad for investing in terms of their ability to move in and out of the markets. This, of course, is very difficult to do, and I would say maybe impossible to do. The truth about markets is more nuanced. Um, sometimes the markets anticipate a strong economy, or a downturn. And so what the markets are doing at any moment versus what the economy is doing at, at any moment sometimes are mismatched. 
Right now, what we're seeing is a pretty broad-based rally in the stock markets. 10 out of 11 industry sectors are up for the year to date. But the strongest by far is coming from the technology sector. And this has been driven, many people believe, by uh, excitement about artificial intelligence, AI, and those kinds of things, um, as well as just some new technology on the forefront that, that people are excited about. For most investors, over the long term, the most effective way to save for the future is to remain in the markets. Not to try to time your way into good and bad markets, because often the signals are confusing and it can be difficult to determine when the best or worst time to be invested is. What we think is the, the most effective strategy, though, is to let time be your, on your side to invest over the long run and to take advantage of that compounding.